Hey folks, Amy has a whole bunch of good jokes to tell you. What's the first one, honey? Baxter. Yes. The mother said, did you thank Mrs. Baxter for the lovely birthday party she gave the children? And the daughter says, well, I was standing in line. I was going to thank her and the move. And the girl in front of me thanked her. And Mrs. Baxter said, don't mention it. So I didn't. Hurry up, Damie. What's the uh, next one? A small town. A man went uh, back to a small town. And nobody, first of all, knew that he had left. <laughs> and nobody, and quite a few people didn't even know him. And the town was so small uh, that the fire department consisted of water picks. And uh, and then he was asked, were there any big men born in your town? And he said, no, just babies. Keep, <laughs> keep going, Amy. Is this good? Oh, yeah. One woman gossiper said to another woman gossiper, the priest said you shouldn't say anything about anybody. The priest said you shouldn't say anything about anybody unless it's good. And boy, is this good. Um, every year. The woman is making out an application for a job, and the interviewer, the man, is sitting right opposite. And she writes down, uh, she hesitates to write down her birthday. She doesn't want him to know how old she is. And so he waits, and she hesitates, and he says, Ma'am, longer you wait, the worse it gets. And one woman put down on her application the day and the month of the birth, but not the year. And the man said, well, what year? And she says, every year. Uh, television is. You know what television is? Television is an art form where somebody who can't do anything tries to entertain somebody who hasn't anything to do? Midas. Amy, why did the man quit his job at Midas Muffler? It was exhausting. Uh, Maine Woods. A camping party was hopelessly lost in the deep woods of Maine. And they wandered around for hours. Finally, one of them got up enough courage to say, you told us you were the best guide in the state of Maine. And he said, I am. Well, I am. But right now, I think we're in Canada. Um, lonesome. The daddy picked up his son at summer camp to bring him home. And the daddy said, did any of the kids get lonesome? And the boy said, yeah, the ones who had dogs. Um, Left-handed. A man says, I was delighted to hear the boss call me his right-hand man. And then I found out that the boss is left-handed. Uh, last one is British. Who said the British are not coming? Paul Reverse. <laughs> Paul Reverse. That's it. That's all the jokes that well, are on good, here. Well, good, I want to tell you what a chat with Glendora is or tries to be and probably fails. We try to just to be a reminder. We're not teaching anything to anybody. Not that we know enough to teach anybody anything. But we're not teaching. We're just reminding. And we're reminding all of us all of us, all of us on this side of the camera, all of us on your side of the camera. What are we reminding them of, Amy? When all is said and done, the only thing that matters is how we treat others? Yes. That's good. Now, this time, say it very slowly, would you? When all is said and done, the only thing that really matters is how do we treat others? That's it, Amy. That's it. And we all want to be the best we can be, don't we? Yes. You know, Amy, I've been thinking. I think most of us use about 80% of our brain power. I think we waste it, don't you? Probably. <laughs> Some people more than others. 
And Amy, I heard you on television coming from Pittsfield Saturday morning. That sounds good. Yeah. And you know, you're very good on television. Thank you. Yeah, Wayne and I think you're very good. And we want to thank the people in Pittsfield. Who are they? David Cache. And Sean. Sean, what is Sean's last name? And the secretary there. We want to thank you for the job you do in cable casting a chat with Glendora every Saturday morning at 11.30 a.m. And we want to thank James Clark for introducing the program. And I wish James Clark would get together with Sean and David and make a closing announcement. The opening announcement doesn't fit on the closing. It doesn't fit at the closing to say, we we'll welcome you to another a chat with Glendora. Well, I don't think we're welcoming that. We're saying goodbye until next week. It looks kind of stupid, and it makes you look stupid, and I know you're not stupid. So I think, folks, you ought to correct that. They don't want people all over the country to think that people in Pittsfield are stupid. Uh, what else, honey, do we talk about? Um, well... I there think, were, I know, the the purpose of, of it, well, how about a Bible passage? You got you have some good Bible passages. Uh, Romans 5.16. That was the one about the, um... Say it. Uh, may the God of hope bring... Joy and peace? Yeah. May the God of hope bring joy and peace. To our hearts, or what? Yes. May the God of hope bring joy and peace to our hearts. And that's Romans what? 5.16. You like that one, folks? Another one, Amy? Uh, Thessalonians 15.13. I don't know that one. Rejoice always, and then what? Rejoice always, for the Lord is with you. Hmm. No, I don't think so. Is that what it is, or is it? That isn't it. Oh, uh, no. It's, it's 516, it. honey. Oh, yeah. 516. Right, yeah. Hang Read on, it. Let me see. What's the matter, Amy? Well, I don't have the paper in front of me right now. <laughs> oh, okay. And you have another? Um, I think those are the only two that I have, yeah. Amy, why don't we just say the Bible passage? Hang on. Okay, go to another page. Okay. Um, what about the happy happenings? All right. Now, Amy, if you would read these fast, one after another. Okay. It would help the audience. Can I add the paper that is in front of you? Yeah, right in front of me? Yeah. Oh, that's the wrong one. Could you give me the one on the very bottom? This is it. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, so it says $70 for Pam. Okay. $20. I took her out to lunch, and it cost $70. It was two spinach pies, and it was uh, a vegan hamburger, deluxe, with, uh, they're not, they don't call them french fries, what did they call them? Um, they called them um, potato skins, <laughs> or no, potato sticks. <laughs> no, it wasn't that, but anyway, they were extremely good, and lettuce and tomato, a pickle, and... Um, a five dollar tip, seventy dollars, and that was at Skodak Diner. And uh, the man had a tremendous number of parent people apparently, and we were getting the order over the phone, and he got upset with us and rude, and he hung up the phone. Well, but I can understand his point, but he really shouldn't have been that rude to us. That was at Skodak Diner at Routes Nine and Twenty. What a grand location! Route 9 going from north to south Canada to Florida. Route 
funny going from Boston all the way to Seattle or Oregon. Next happy uh, happened. $20 for telephone spectrum. Go. $11 for Google storage. You're doing great. Uh, Glenn called the Humane Society in Norwalk. You're doing well. Keep going. Humane Society in Torrington. Yes. And they're going to be on your program. It's called Kitty Quarter. Or Quarters. Which is it? It's Kitty Quarter. And Bobby's going to be on there. And we're going to help find homes for the kitties. Um, Pam Amy Malik left, left hot food carrier on top of the refrigerator. Okay. A place for everything and everything in its place. They are having the hardest time learning that. Uh, Pat Nichols will look into Heap. Oh! Madeline Badly Infected. Meh! Faster, honey. Um, let me see. Where, where, did, where, where, oh yeah. Uh, Veterans Administration is bogus. Well, I shouldn't say that, and yesterday being Veterans Day, but the Veterans Administration, Franklin was in World War II. You couldn't pick the worst one. World War II, from D-Day to Battle of the Bulge, right up to Victory in Europe Day, and all the veterans were entitled to a survivor's benefit. Their wives were entitled to that. And they wouldn't give it to Glenny. They said Glenny was making too much money. What does a survivor's benefit have to do with making money and doing five and a half years in World War II? So the Veterans Administration in uh, Columbus County, Columbia County, appealed it. And that's over a year ago. And it took them practically a year to deny the first request. Now, come on, Veterans Administration. Certainly you can run an organization better than that. But as for the veterans, give them all. They deserve all. God bless you, veterans. Um, Nesentia disagreeable about Lanyard? Yeah. This Lanyard is, needs to be replaced. So I called up my Medical Alert, and I said, could I have a new... And Pat did, and said, could we have a new Lanyard? And uh, Medical Alert says, oh, you have to have permission of the insurance company, Nesentia, which is the insurance company that Medicaid pays a premium to every month to do service to us. And she gives me a hard time. And the nurse is in Buffalo. Now, does that make sense that my nurse is in Buffalo? Don't you think my nurse should be in Albany or, or around here somewhere? So I said, never mind, we'll go buy a lanyard. But she called up later and said she asked him. But I'll tell you, medical alert is really good. Amy, you think I should demonstrate it? Um, I suppose, huh? Did you press the button? Yes, I did. Hmm. Huh, weird. Is this thing on? I can't even press a button right. Here we go. Can't wait. Your crew will be connected to an operator shortly. Well, I was just wondering if that thing was on. <laughs> It is. Okay. Hello, Christy with Connect America Medical Alert and Accorded Line. Glendora, do you need help or medical assistance? No, honey. I was showing it to my friends. Okay. No problem. I have 45 Elm Street, Apartment A for your home address. Yes, and thank you for being so nice to us. You're very welcome. I'll go ahead and disregard. I hope you both have a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Medical Alert. Bye-bye. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye. No, Amy, LTE. she answered that very Ooh. fast. Bars. Yes. System ready. She's very, very good. It's a good system. 
It's called Across America or something, Amy? Connect America. Connect America. Uh, next is Donna gets a C. She might be a good candidate. Uh, Donna, I gave her a beautiful opportunity for a job. She came in Thursday and worked from 9 to 3.30 on it in training. She would do back uh, on uh, Saturday. No show and no call. Donna, you hurt your conscience. Don't. Why did you do that? You hurt your conscience for a lifetime. For a lifetime now, your conscience will be bothering you. And I'm glad she, in a way, that she didn't come back. Because you know why, Amy? Why? I was paying her $200 for that. Really? She could get through, like, even at noontime if she was good at her job. And that's, I just decided that's too much money. Uh, $200 for uh, Thursday and Saturday from 9 a.m. to, say, 2, 3 p.m., even earlier. Okay. Uh, McGee finished diary through August. Yes, we're reading the diary from 19, from 2081 up to the current November 2083. Do you enjoy it, Amy? Yes. I do, too. Uh, McGee finished Franklin articles through November. Yes. And then Amy read them up through the first half of December. And you know what we're going to do with those folks? We're going to copy 10 or 20 of them, and then there's about 30 every month, you see, because he was on a daily newspaper, the Springfield Union in Springfield, Massachusetts. And Amy, we're going to copy those, if you will, and we'll send them to Franklin's nephew or grandnephew in Fort Worth so that the nephew can see what a great writer and reporter his uncle was. Next, honey. Uh, Amy Granvon, new walkway. Yes, how did that new walkway turn out? It turned out really good. They did it perfectly, and they came back today to finish putting the dirt in around it. Well, wonderful. Looks nice, huh? Yeah. And it's a lot safer, huh? It looks a lot better than the old one did, because the old one was falling apart. Oh, that's so. good. Do you know what it costs? No, I don't. My grandparents didn't tell me what, how much no, it costs. No, it's not, probably none of my business, but I like to have people know those things. All right, two more happy happenings, and then we'll go on to the next one. Uh, Malik did outside hall. Oh, yeah. What he does, first of all, is sweep the concrete stoop, because the gravel comes onto the driveway, onto the, and then that gravel goes into the hall, and then it goes on our lovely rugs. So he takes the blue rugs, and he shakes them. They're all brand new. And he damp cloths them, and he puts them out on the concrete fence and lets them dry in the sun. And maybe let it rain on them, and then let the sun dry the rain. And then he uh, sweeps the outside hall floor, and then he swabs the deck. And he did that, and I'm going to give him that as a job every Wednesday, okay, Amy? Okay. And then Tuesday he'll do a... He'll scrutinize two columns in the museum, okay? Sure. Now, what will he do on Thursday? What will he do on Thursday? Okay. Uh, he lost the election by only 50 votes. And the reason he lost it is that he wasn't listed twice for two parties on the election, and the Republican opponent was. So the Republican won. Uh, he, he was at a, uh, a restaurant having a cup of coffee and a man sat down beside him and he said, I'm the Republican candidate uh, in our town. You're the Democrat candidate. He says, I really enjoyed your speeches. He says, I enjoyed them so much I'm going to vote for you. Next, Amy. Amy. Um, Franny from Newtown laughed at joke for first time. For the first time in his life that I've known him, I've heard Franny laugh at a joke, at a joke and said some snide remark. You want me to tell you what the joke is? Everybody laughs at it. Adam was talking to God. Adam said, God, why did you make Eve? 
And God said, well, I thought you were lonesome. And Adam says, God, why did you make her so beautiful? Well, God says, so you would like her. And Adam says, God, why did you make her so dumb? And God said, so she would like you. Now listen, folks. Amy, first of all, how many minutes do we have left? Uh, we're at 20 minutes, so we have eight minutes left. Okay, let's try for this one. Or at least we'll go as far as we can. Don't pay any attention to bad. Don't speak bad. Don't see bad. Don't hear bad. Don't think bad. Don't give any of your time, any of your life, any of your energy, any of your thought to bad. Like the boy who woke up in the middle of the night screaming and thrashing, the monsters, the monsters. His mother came <laughs> into his room. She turned on the light. There's no monsters, but they were here. No, they were never here. You thought they were here. No, you thought the bad was here. You, okay, if you want to admit there's bad, go ahead and admit that's bad. But you don't have to think about it. You're in control of your thought. You can think about good. Don't think about bad. You've been brought up to think about bad, but don't you fall for it. You think about good. Don't you give any time to bad, any life to bad, or any energy to bad, or any thought to bad. What do you do with all your time, life, energy, and thought? You give it to good and doing good and thinking good. I'm worse off than you are. I should put this all in a first person plural, not second person plural. So all of us should give all of our time, energy, and thought to doing good, to being kind, to caring and sharing, to empathy, to sympathy, to being loving, love, happy, cheer, humor, enthusiasm. What's that again? Give our time to love, happy, cheer, humor, and enthusiasm. And folks, you are so good at that. You're better at that than anybody in the world. Nobody's as good at it as you are. You are adept. You are fully skilled. Do you hear? Fully skilled. Well-versed. Proficient. And then... Do everything that your conscience tells you to do. If your conscience tells you to do it, you get up and do it. If your conscience tells you not to do it, don't you dare touch it. And that gives you a release from guilt. You can stand before your conscience and say, Look, I did what you told me to do, and I didn't do what you told me not to do. And all when he gets rid of guilt, it gets rid of fear. All of a sudden, since you're living right, you don't have anything to fear. You don't fear anything. You don't think anything bad is going to happen to you. And then another reason that you get rid of fear is that you realize that God is everything. God is good and God is taking care of you and you're taking care of God. How many minutes left, dear? Uh, four minutes. Will you let me know when we get to 20... Eight twenty six yeah twenty eight is good okay and then you keep your work up to date what you're supposed to do you do it in your case Gondora is keeping up soul to soul or chat with Gondora keeping it up to date and you're way behind and it's keeping the articles into the advertiser newspaper every week. And we haven't received our subscription in the mail for two weeks. And it's the regimen of saintly eating. 
the regimen of saintly eating. And then you learn that everything has a place and everything is in its place. A place for everything and everything in its place. A place for everything and everything in its place. And you don't criticize and you don't complain. And you be refined. Keep your hands away from your face unless you're in the bathroom. Be refined. Two o'clock p.m. 85.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 85 degrees in here? And... Uh, that's a cute little clock. It gives you the inside temperature. Glendora's temperature year-round is 78 degrees. Um, and you speak good English. And you have a good vocabulary, a good, sharp, workable, beautiful vocabulary for English language, which is so beautiful. And what else is there? And you keep doing these beautiful, good things day after day after day. And you know what, folks? We find the truth, the great big truth. That God is love. We at last find out who God is. God is love. And... Love is God. You've always wanted a relationship with God. Now you have it. And now you're happy. God is love. And love is God. And then you know the wholeness of God. This hand, chopped off from this body, this hand is not going to exist, is it? Well, we're not going to exist if we're chopped off from God. And then you learn another great big truth. Oh, wait a second. You say love. That's an unknown to me. How do I know what love is? You know what love is. Since you were in your mother's arms. No, thank we all are gone. You've known what love is since you were in your mother's arms. And the next big truth is you learn that God is the only force and the only power. There's no other force, no other power. It's like the boy with the monsters. There are no monsters. There's no other force, there's no other power, unless you let it be in your thinking. And then, since you are, since you do exist, and since there is no other power or no other force, then you have to be some of God. Why? There's nothing else for you to be because there's nothing else that exists. If you exist, you've got to be some of God because that's all that exists. And that leads you to knowing what you should be doing as a career. Creativity. That's what God is all about. Four billion years of creativity every day, better and better. We are at 28 minutes. Thank you. Folks, I'll pick up on this. On uh, Your job is to keep the universe, is to make the universe go and grow and glow. That's our job, to make the universe go and grow and glow.